us who is both who is the hope appealing for peace or really praying for peace. Um, and and the same applies to the carry Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you what do you have to say about that guy? Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and welcome to the latest edition of Views on the News. This is a show where we take apart, we have opinions about the items that were previously reported in Global Atheist News, about how uh, the religious have impacted humanity over the past seven days. And as usual, we have a panel of uh, wise and witty people including Guy Otten from Manchester. Hello. David Orenstein. Trying to pronounce your name right, David. You can call, you can call me anything. <laughs> he, he's in New York or New York State or New York City or mm-hmm. somewhere there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also Matthew Taylor, who is in Somerset. So Hi, welcome. Mary. Welcome, guys. Thank you for taking part in the panel. So the first item, it's about the Taliban. It it harks back to when the Taliban took over the Afghanistan government a couple of years ago now. But it's relevant because a documentary has just been made. The, The documentary name is Bread and Roses, and it explores the day to day lives of three women in the weeks following the Taliban's takeover. It's notable because the producer is the Oscar winning actress Jennifer Lawrence. Mm-hmm. So she tells how she's got a clip. I'll just read you this clip. It's voiced by an a Afghanistan woman. She says, You only oppress women. The young woman fighter says to the Taliban. Sorry, the young woman says to the Taliban fighter. I told you not to talk, he shouts back. I will kill you right here. Okay, kill me, she replies, raising her voice to match his. You closed schools and universities. It's better to kill me. Now, Jennifer Lawrence was watching that. And she says... My heart was beating so fast watching these women defy the Taliban. Mm -hmm. You don't see this side of the story, women fighting back in the everyday news, but it's an important part of the story. Mm -hmm. And she says she was devastated to think about the sudden loss of control women have in, uh, they've had to endure in Afghanistan. They currently have no autonomy it's so important for them to be given the opportunity to tell their own story. So she's made this documentary for that purpose. Mm-hmm. Let's hear what you have to say about that, guys. Well, to me, it, it, it's, it's startling in that it's, it's sort of like The Handmaid's Tale. Mm-hmm. You know, Marvel yeah. uh, uh, book, and then it was made into a TV series uh, yeah. where women who were living in secular society had access to everything that anybody yeah. who lives in a secular society should. And then yeah. these religious fanatics take over a government and women become essentially slaves. It is the height of cowardice um, mm. to enslave other people. And it is a form of violence, which is terrible, um, which is, you know, tragic. Um, so um, Jennifer Lawrence's uh, documentary, uh, should win awards and be used um, to, you know, inform and liberate people of what extreme religion can do. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I I do a certain amount of debating with um, Muslims on Facebook, and I'm faced with a completely different culture and a different way of thinking which yeah. is anti-enlightenment, anti-equality. Mm-hmm. They, they don't think things like uh, enlightenment or in- equality are, are t- interesting values at all. It's all yeah. about what God wants. Right. And um, I, I, I don't know how, how, how we're going to sort of 
get the message across to these people because they're fighting hard to get their message across to us as well. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a real intellectual battle in the world between Islam and what, what I'd call enlightenment, secular mm -hmm. um, values and standards. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if um, other religions, in particular Christianity, is not actually engaged. You, 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 I just don't feel any pressure or, you know. Um, well, in the States, uh, I'm sorry for interrupting. Uh, in the States, ahead, yeah. the evangelical Christians um, have sought over uh, decades to um, take away women's right to choose, uh, yeah. take away yeah. um, uh, right to birth control. Um, uh, you know, there's a whole movement amongst the evangelicals um, that is very similar to what is happening um, in uh, Muslim-based countries where, you know, men rule and mm -hmm. women's places in the home and you don't go anywhere and you don't get education and you don't get health care if you're a woman. Um, so it's, it's, it's a form of violence that is not just associated, I think, with Islam. Um, I think it's with any, any orthodoxy. It's yeah, same, yeah. Thing, same thing in, in, um, in Judaism. Yeah. You know, with, with the Lubavitches and, and those. And those uh, well, it, it's really depressing if, if uh, you know, Christianity is kind of uh, siding with Islam. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's another sort of totalitarian religious system. It's really yeah. depressing. Yeah. I mean, I don't see a lot of it in this country, but of course it, 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 they are there. Right. And, and I get the impression that the Church of England is actually, uh, there's a bit of a battle for control of it from mm -hmm. these fundamentalists going on as we speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, David, you mentioned that um, they are doing what their God wants. Right. And and uh, I'm going to take issue with that because I think they're doing what, because their God's agreeing with them, isn't he? Right. <laughs> I think they're doing what they want and mm -hmm. they're just labeling it as from their God. It, it's awfully convenient how they how they just happen to want the same things. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I I don't want a god that disagrees with me. In fact, mm -hmm. if if I belong to a religion where the god starts to sound a bit different from my views, I'm going to start a new religion. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, absolutely. And I think what was what was I'll start again. What struck me about that piece that you just read John is when you oppress people to the point where there is nothing left for them to live for they will they will stand up and they will do anything and they will express this kind of thing and holding yeah. a gun to them and threatening to kill them isn't going to achieve anything well, because you've taken yeah. everything else yes. away from them yeah. anywhere good point Right. Yes. And so so killing them will almost be a mercy, will almost be a blessing for them because you've stripped them of everything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think when you do that to a people group, that is what you're going to get back. And I think yeah. what that item and that that confrontation that you read out about is a symptom of that. It's evidence that this male oppressive, religiously uh, instigated uh, leadership has taken so much from women that yeah. they will do this and the threat of death ha achieves nothing to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When well, you've lost everything, there's nothing yeah. left to lose. Quite. Right. Quite. Yeah. And yeah. it's a Bob Dylan lyric, right? When you ain't got nothing, you got nothing to lose. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And it sparked a memory on me. Um, and I know it's not the same thing, but I think it's an indication that this is not this, this kind of thing is everywhere. A few years ago, I was on holiday with the family in Canada. We we're at Niagara mm -hmm. Falls. And I saw a group there who were clearly from a religious sect. They had the telltale hair, all the men were wearing the same hats. The women were wearing all the same style of dresses that went all the way down to their ankles. I don't know which it was from, but you know, that's, that isn't the important bit. And I saw them and everywhere they went, the men walked in front, the men led yes. and the women just trudged behind. And yes. I caught eyes with one of the, the girls there mid-teens is my guesstimate of of her age she might have been a bit older and the overriding feeling i had when i looked at her was my word she is utterly 
utterly miserable. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what could I do about it? I can't believe it. I thought, what could I do about it? And I wanted to be able to do something, but obviously there was nothing to do. And oh. it still strikes me today, several years later, the misery I saw in that face. And yeah. It has the power to haunt us when we see that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, there is a rather sick joke about this, about because uh, the, the, the journalist went to Pakistan and he observed, like you have, how the women walk behind the men. And then about 10 years later, he went back to the same place and he saw the women walking in front of the men. And he said, my word, what revolution have you had here? How is it that women are now more important, more forward than the men? And the man said, landmines. No, I I was already there. I was expecting mm -hmm. that. That's a tragic mm -hmm. punchline. That is, yeah. that is terrible. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so moving on, the BBC. You may remember that they made a documentary based on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, in particular his role in anti-Muslim violence in Gujarat back in 2002 when he was the chief minister of the state. And that, that documentary was only aired in the UK, but of course you, you can grab anything and view it anywhere on the internet these days. So in India, they attempted to block people from sharing this program, calling it hostile propaganda and anti-Indian garbage with a colonial mindset. But people did watch it, particularly they had watch parties in universities in, in India. However, a Gujarat-based group has filed a suit um, claiming that the documentary has defamed India and the, as a result of which, the BBC's Delhi offices have been raided by Indian income tax authorities and um, an investigation was opened into the broadcaster for alleged violation of foreign exchange rules. Mm, so, wow. so you can, you, I'm a suspicious person. <laughs> you can make what you like from that, but... Uh, there you go. Mm -hmm. yeah, the beauty of corruption charges is you don't really need very much evidence. Yes. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's, a, it's an attempt to censor, isn't it? Yes. Um, and, and, of course, that, that's exactly what powerful, corrupt people do. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we're, 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 we're seeing it in, in the UK with mm -hmm. some law designed to restrict protests. Mm -hmm. uh, which are a yes, bit I'm worrying. deeply uncomfortable by this mm -hmm. the lengths and the ease with which that law passed. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Nixon did it. He had his list. Yeah. He had people under IRS watch, the FBI. Mm. You know, it's um, uh, really sad. But then his goose was cooked. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So moving to Bolivia, this doesn't often make the news. It's a rather sort of remote country, landlocked piece of South America. But this won't surprise you. They've, there's been revelations of large-scale exploitation of children by Catholic priests committing sexual abuse. So the president's office of Bolivia has asked Pope Francis for files on certain Catholic priests who emigrated to Bolivia mm -hmm. from Spain. It's a sort mm -hmm. of ex-colony of Spain. And this is a result of a diary of a deceased priest that was released or uncovered recently in which he admitted or recorded in his diary that he had abused more than 80 minors in Bolivia since he arrived in the 1970s. 
Jesus. You know, it, it's just so sick. Um, I, I mean, in most Western countries in Europe and in the United States, you find that not only is religiosity going down, but um, the the organized church. Uh, there was just an article about the St. Louis diocese closing about 30 percent of their parishes because people just aren't going anymore. Yeah, you know, people aren't going anymore for a lot of different reasons. Uh, one of them, of course, is the fact that there's so much sexual and financial corruption within the yeah. Catholic yeah. Church. Mm. And so the only place that they can really export um, um, and, and actually build a flock are in places that are formerly considered third world, which has been Africa and yeah. Central and South America. Yeah. And so the hijinks, if that's what we can call them, don't change. Uh, sadly, um, that cancer continues because it's it's abated in North America. It's abated in Europe. But mm. where these fiends want to travel, they are alive and thriving. Well, these ones aren't, actually. Well, <laughs> they're not. But, you know, we we're talking about Bolivia. But what about Costa Rica? What about Ecuador? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What about yeah. Venezuela? What, yeah. You know, yeah. Go on. What, El Salvador, Nicaragua. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So that they've got eight cases going against priests for uh, prosecuting priests for the, these offences. Uh, four of them originated from Spain. They were immigrants, mm -hmm. and all of them are now deceased. But uh, that's um, that's not going to stop uh, people demanding compensation, of course. No, and it's intergenerational because the people who are abused themselves, their lives can be ruined and mm -hmm. their relationships with other people can be ruined. Yeah, yeah. And they pass this violence or sadness on to their children. So it's yeah. not like it's even just, oh, one person is the victim. It is families that become a victim. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes, and the children of those children yes, also become victims exactly. as well. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. And you'd have thought the Catholic Church would have learnt by now to start purging these things proactively rather mm -hmm. than keep on sitting on them and just hoping that the next one won't come up because these things mm -hmm. are going to come up. You know, it's like oh. the hunt for the, the Nazi war, war criminals that mm -hmm. went on for decades while we rooted yeah. them all out. The mm -hmm. church mm -hmm. must realize that this yeah. is what's going to happen to them. So they should be yeah. proactive and get these people out because this yeah. whole adage of all publicity is good publicity is clearly not true. For <laughs> right. right. No, no, no. Um, I mean, the no. thing is, it, it, it's it, it it must have been so rife throughout not just the the catholic church but other churches as well oh. it, that it's going to carry on being discovered i mean we've just heard that uh, the former archbishop of york yeah uh, man called Fentimu, um ha, had it was had been covering up or failing to respond to uh, allegations in in uh, you know under his responsibility in mm -hmm. years and years ago. And it's still, these things are still coming out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he did yes, have right. that obnoxious quote where he said, yeah, child abuse is bad, but church law trumps yes. it or something yes. like that. I mean, yes. uh, th that's the kind of statement that makes you feel a sick in your mouth. It really is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right too about uh, all news not being good news because as has become very apparent in the media recently, vis-a-vis -vis people like Philip Schofield, they love a scandal. They're not going to once they mm -hmm. get their teeth into a scandal, they're not going to let that go. Mm -hmm. They're going to keep making copy out of it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Good. So Israel doesn't want to be left out of our considerations. I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. So. Thousands of Israeli nationalists marched through Jerusalem's old city in an annual celebratory day for Israelis that became one of humiliation for Palestinians living under occupation. The marchers, mostly male Orthodox teens and young men, were celebrating Israel's capture of East Jerusalem in 1967. 
they waved blue and white Israeli flags and chanted slogans such as death to Arabs and we will burn your village. Oh, wow. It's what they have been doing for the last 70 years anyway. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not cool enough, is it? It's not no. likely to progress towards an amicable solution. No. no. Religion no. of peace, is, is, that, is that what we're supposed to believe? Yeah, and, 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 and it's, always, it, 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 it's, it's always the most evangelical of any faith that is the most violent. Uh, and here it is with you know Jews and the whole, you know, it's it just it's just so sad. Yeah, and there, there seems no way out of the Israeli-Palestine situation. I mean, right at the beginning, um, that there was there was um, quite rightly sympathy with the Israelis who were under attack mm -hmm. from several different um, Arab countries and as well as Arab militias mm -hmm. in Palestine. Yeah, but. In recent years, it feels to me that the moral case is, uh, has kind of um, yeah. reversed. Yes, um, sadly, and and we we need to find some way out of this, or they yeah. need to. It's. I, mean, I I think you can no longer I, for some reason, and 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 it makes me feel terrible. But I I don't think you can have a diplomatic solution. I think ultimately you need an economic solution to this because uh, that seems to drive so many um, policies these days that if you can make a good economic solution for peace between these two warring parties that have gone on for not only the decades that we've been alive collectively but you know going back to when they were all Bedouins 5,000 years ago yeah. you might be able to you know figure something out because I don't think it can be done through the idea of quote unquote peace. I think it has to be done for other ed advantage. Yeah, I'm not sure how that would happen, but it's an interesting. I, I don't know, I don't know, but uh, you know, uh, you'd have to really wear rose colored glasses to think that, you know, two people, two sets of ethnic groups that claim the same land from different religions, yeah. <laughs> you know, are, are, are planning to not, you know, annihilate themselves um, over over the long distance is uh, is something uh, uh, that shouldn't be expected when there's no reason for peace. You have to give an, an, uh, both groups an incentive to peace, and peace just based on don't kill anybody. It doesn't seem to be it. Well, do you know, I'm I'm probably deluded and an optimist, but. I like to think if you could even show both of them, both sides, mm -hmm. that there's there's no evidence for either of their gods. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. why do you have different religions? Why are you at each other's throats? Mm -hmm. It's just stupid. It's needless. And and you know there 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 are Palestinians and there are Israelis who work across their individual borders for peace they show the example that people of goodwill regardless of their faith and personal tragedies can work together um i wish it wasn't the exception to the rule but if we could bottle that and sprinkle it all on all these people with long beards on both sides mm. yeah. we get a different outcome so yeah. so as the man who has a beard no. <laughs> no, no. I'm the odd one out. <laughs> right. But this is yeah, a very yeah. secular beard. This is a Darwin beard. <laughs> so what we need to do is to substitute their particular gods for, on one side, uh, Humpty Dumpty. So we can call them the <laughs> Humpty Dumptyans. And on the other side, we can call them the Rumpelstiltskians. <laughs> yeah. And that'll put it into, you know, a yeah. rational position. Oh, right. <coughs> Excuse me. The US of A. Now, we, you mentioned uh, the repression of women earlier. So let's do it USA style. All right. South Carolina. 
you know, since the uh, repealing of Roe v. Wade mm -hmm. last year, it's been rolling around the states. They've all been trying to outdo each other mm -hmm. uh, in the in their fierce uh, banning of abortion. Mm -hmm. And South Carolina, they've just passed a bill that would ban almost all abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. In mm -hmm. other words, before most women know they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this has just been, I was about to be signed by the governor, Henry McMaster, who is a Republican. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the, the, the director of public affairs for Planned Parenthood, South Atlantic. I don't know why South Atlantic is in there because it's North Atlantic, but never mind. This woman, the, the director of public affairs for PPSA, Vicky Ringer, she said her organization will file a request for a temporary restraining order after the bill is signed by Mr. McMaster. She says she's complaining that 27 Republican men mm -hmm. voted today to ban abortion in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I'm gutted, she says, because women will die. Mm hmm. She's not wrong, is she? No. Uh, no. You, uh, look, uh, DeSantis, who's running for president and governor of Florida, yeah. quietly signed a six-week ab abortion law as well. So yeah. for all those people out there who might be watching this and might be interested in Ron DeSantis uh, for president, uh, watch out because your, um, your ovaries or your wife's or your sister's or your daughter's ovaries are in his sights. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had an opportunity to ask an American lady here in the UK her feelings on DeSantis comparing to Trump. And she said without hesitation that, in her opinion, DeSantis will be worse than Trump. Wow. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's the same policy, it's just a different suit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because so Trump really put people on the Supreme Court who overturned Roe v. Wade. Yeah. He's responsible for this. Yeah. Guy. Oh, well, I, I was going to say um, Trump and Boris Johnson had this kind of incompetence air around them. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're more they're more bluster than reality. But um, that didn't stop them from doing damage. And they, right. they both done it. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. So imagine how much damage DeSantis could do when he's actually focused on doing it. Yeah, yeah, because he, right. he he sounds as if he's more competent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Yes. Staying with the States, Houghton University. Apparently, it's a small school with about 1,000 students in upstate New York. No. I don't know if you've heard of it, David. No, it's, it's a small... Um, no, not really. Yeah. Well, it is... It's got halls of residence and halls of residence directors. Right. But two of them have just been fired because they included their pronouns in their work put emails. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, he, him, she, her. Yeah. Ow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I think I should, in, in, you know, put uh, after my name, uh, you know, you, my lord, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Take the piss out. Of it. Yes. I, I was going to put this, that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, oi. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. so these, these two uh, directors of Halls of Residence, <clears throat> uh, they've, they've, made some waves because uh, one of them has uh, been invited by the, the school's newspaper to express her thoughts. Mm -hmm. and, and she says, if anything, it feels like it just further demonstrates that the university is only interested in the kinds of diversity that are convenient for marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. mm. Right. Here, here. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, these small Christian schools, um, you know, they're run like little fiefdoms almost. Mm. Um, so, I mean, I don't know about the overall academic quality. Um, uh, I'm sure some might be very good. Some might not be. Uh, but, um, you know, when you're a private college, um, the law, at least in the United States, is, is that essentially, in, unless you're violating Title IX, yeah. you can do anything you fucking, I'm sorry, anything you want. <laughs> sorry, this is, a, this is a family show. I'm sorry. It is. Yes, yes. Your, your knuckles have been wrapped, David. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So moving quickly on, U.S. retailer Target, they've been prompted to remove some of their items from their shelves because they are uh, causing what's described as volatile circumstances. They've moved Pride Month merchandise to the back of the store. And that includes um, items that have rainbow motifs and love is love printed on T-shirts and mugs that have gender fluid written on them. <laughs> and, awesome. Yes, I love yeah. that mug. I want that mug. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I know. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if I want to yeah. drink my tea from a mug that says that. <laughs> <laughs> I would. You might, you might find them on Amazon. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, according to a Target spokesman, since introducing this year's collection, we've experienced threats impacting our team members' sense of safety and well-being while at work. And given these volatile circumstances, we are making adjustments to our plans, including removing items that have been at the center of the most significant confrontational behavior. He said, there's been an increase in incidents of pride merchandise being thrown on the floor. Oh, my wow. God. Such yeah. bullshit. The Does that mean it's at the back the of the bullying. store with the Bibles and the, the, the <laughs> Christian books and stuff like that? No, I don't know where the Bibles are situated. The Bibles will be at the front window. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so you're you're telling me that Doritos can make you gay if uh, <laughs> if they sell if they if they support the LGBT community? Yeah. What which way you hold the triangle? I <laughs> 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 uh, love that. The, the most beautiful thing about this story is the rainbow is now a shield of protection against Christians or a trigger yeah. for Christians. Right. Yeah. So it's yeah. no longer their thing. Christians are now afraid of the rainbow. It yeah. now incites mm. violence in Christians. And that's the most beautiful thing of 2023. I'm sorry, I yeah. just have to say yeah. it. Yeah. You'll be right. Yeah. So you'll be so interested. Does, does that mean that when God puts a rainbow in the, in the, in the sky... <laughs> yeah. the, the, it's the, the rain. It's that gender fluid again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, God definitely supports LGBTQ. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. You, There's you'll an be Instagram post for you. You'll be interested to hear that some of the items which have been removed have images of pentagrams, horned skulls, and other satanic visuals. Mm. Yeah, they, they they tried to do that with I don't know if you have it in in the UK Monster Energy drinks with the three oh yeah, oh, yeah. they 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 tr because apparently that's satanic I, you know <laughs> we are we are primates so we're pattern seeking in you know we're we're a pattern seeking species yeah so that's we could see anything we want in anything you know. But it, the, 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 I think the flying spaghetti monster people should reclaim those. Yes. 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 Yeah, I don't know where Dredd is. He, he's uh, up north in uh, British Columbia with a poor signal, I think. Oh, anyway, right. you, mentioned, you mentioned the UK, and um, you'll be pleased to hear that we've hit the news over here because a Christian teacher in name of Joshua Sutcliffe, who was employed as a maths teacher 
first of all, at the Cherwell School in Oxford, has been found by a professional conduct panel to, um, to have made anti-LGBT comments uh, while he was teaching maths. And apparently he showed a video which criticized men who are passive or not masculine enough and the teaching regulation or agency has found that he failed to safeguard the dignity and well-being of his pupils and was therefore in breach of requirements to uphold public trust in the profession mm. and maintain high standards of ethics and behavior and he was prohibited from teaching indefinitely i thought you'd like to hear wow. that oh, wow. see that's the way you do it you come down like a stone on these infractions and you, mm -hmm. you keep people in check bravo that's right yeah that's the way on that happier note gentlemen yes i'll thank you very much for participating in this show and uh, wish you all the best for the following week yes. there won't be a views on the news next sunday why will that be david uh, we will be hosting uh, Larry Krause right. and Richard Dawkins and, and one or two others. Yeah, oh, that, that other be guy. a big yeah, event. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's some, will... There are some really good um, discussions and interviews between Richard Dawkins and Lawrence mm -hmm. Krause on yeah. YouTube. Yes, um, right. I've seen several of them, and I think they're really, but really valuable, useful. Yeah. So I can't encourage people to come and join in with CMICT 23, Changing Minds in Changing Times 23, because we've sold out. So well, well done. too bad. That's, it, that's great, great news. If you want to be sorry, there, I can't be there. Yeah. If you want to be there, you've missed it. Look out for yeah. the But hopefully it'll it'll appear, you know, the the, the the essence of it will appear on YouTube and on the websites in due course. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. We will be videoing it and releasing it in drips and drabs. Yes. Mm -hmm. awesome. Anyway, and, and I think a lot of it's down to you, John, for for um, organizing it. So here, here. Um, I acknowledge that. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Yes. It's been fun. Yeah, bravo. Yeah. Well, nice. right. Thank you. Say bye-bye. Okay. See you, everybody. Russia was the Pope appealing for peace or was he praying for peace? Um, and uh, the same applies to the Caribbean dragon. Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you, what do you have to say about that guy?